Rise Combat is about the player stepping in the shoes uh, of our main guy, Marius Titus. You are a Roman warrior. You are working your way up through the ranks. It's brutal, it's up close, it's intense. He's that grounded, he's strong, he's powerful, he's, he's heroic. He's not about flamboyant moves, he's not a ninja, he's a warrior, he's a soldier. And so when we think about him as a warrior and we think about how he's going to fight, then those are the kind of concepts we try and think about. Is this attack efficient? Is it getting to the, you know, to the strike as quickly, as deadly as possible? And is it powerful? Is it strong? When he throws his shield, is all his weight behind it, you know, so when it slams, you know, it really slams. We actually worked with an expert on Roman fighting and combat strategies to, to get us some knowledge about how to handle weapons and shields and all that kind of stuff. And that was really helpful for us. We had the chance to, to play a bit with some actual equipment and that was really insightful for us. For my first date I, I brought a, a two big um, gun cases full of swords and weapons and I've, I brought a Roman armor, a Roman helmet, two different kinds of shields. I brought a Celtic shield, I brought a Roman shield so that they can touch real weapons and see oh how, how they look, what's the weight, what's the size, all that. He would tell us like if you're standing like what, how would your body move to attack behind you? or attack in a different direction and it was really interesting because he had some things and poses that we maybe would not have thought about. Every single action you have in Rise can flow in and out of each other. So it gives the player maximum flexibility. So I can block this enemy, I can attack this one, I can push this one away, and I can throw my pilum at a guy uh, who's an incoming attacker. And what it does is it gives you the ability to kind of, you know, create your own language. Marius does not attack one guy and finish him and then stop and then move to the other guy. It really means he's attacking this one and then goes to a different guy and then another guy. Push, deflect, uh, stab. So he can all do that continuously as long as you're chaining the combos correctly. Based on the type of enemy you're dealing with, uh, there'll be a way to defeat him. So certain enemies will have to kind of deal a lot more damage uh, to take them out and that can happen two ways. One is you can choose the damage perk and decide to kind of take more off of him or you could choose the health perk to stay alive longer to be able to maybe get more hit points. You go into an encounter and the first thing you do is say, okay, who am I facing? What can I do? And then the next one could be completely different because you've got a completely different setup. And on top of that, we have this layer where they work together and that's when things get even more interesting because they'll attack differently when they've got different supporting AIs around them and so that takes the intensity up to a different stage. The player can switch from one action to another action, from one AI to another AI and it's also about how the AI interacts to try and break the player's flow. So in Rise you can expect to unlock a lot of executions throughout the course of the game. You're kicking a guy off a ledge so you may kill him that way. Um, if you get close to a fire, there's numerous executions there. If you're in the water, if you're against a, a wall, um, if you're against a ledge, it goes on and on and on. The executions really stack up. We're definitely going for a higher level of emotion out of our characters. Not only in cinematics, not only in executions, but also live in combat. We did a lot of stuff with the camera stuff. We did really extreme animations, really close animations. Intensity, it's about brutality. It's about being close to the enemy that's trying to kill you as you're trying to kill him. So one of the final things we're really trying to achieve with the Rice Combat is give it a skill for mastery. When we take flow and we take the intensity of the AI and bring them together, that's when the depth of the scope for mastery becomes apparent. Because in one encounter, you can finish it a certain way. Maybe you kill everyone, but you didn't quite execute everyone. So then you want to play it again. Set them up in different ways so maybe you can execute everyone, but maybe you didn't double execute everyone. Did you perform the perfect chain? Was your flow from beginning to end this like seamless smooth transition from move to move, enemy to enemy, where you've got them all set up in this perfect state and you just push the trigger button and they all just fall. An important aspect of kind of doing this whole game is this, you know, idea that, you know, we can create a combat system where you can be more emotionally engaged to what your player is actually doing. I mean, that will be the first sign that we've done well if you actually feel something out of combat. And the other aspect is that just nuts and bolts wise, 
we have a solid combat system, something that we can build more and more on top of. And that's really where the depth aspect comes in. You know, we want it to feel really, really good to play. We don't want players to feel frustrated or, you know, get too angry over the fact they can't pull something off. But at the same time, master players will be able to do stuff that when you watch these YouTube videos, you're going to go, this is amazing. How does someone ever do that? And, you know, if we can, if we can kind of tap into those two main elements, then uh, we would have felt we've done, you know, a good job. We've really done everything we can to wrap it all up to have a really good full experience for the player.